I'm gonna try my hardest not to butcher these Japanese names, but I can't make any promises at this point because I've tried to memorize these names and it is just not working out for me. I'm so sorry in advance. Uh, anyways, today we're gonna be talking about a 2020 Japanese boy love drama that I just binge watched. I literally thought I was gonna binge watch it in a day, but it took me two days. Uh, neither here nor there. It's called Cherry Magic, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard. Again, apologize for the names, but it stars Akaso Eji and Machita Keta, who play Adachi san and Kurosawa san. Kurosawa san! <laughs> the series is an adaptation of a manga of the same name, and apparently it's like super popular. I had no idea because I don't read mangas. I do sometimes watch anime, um, but I haven't seen this one. Actually, it has a movie sequel, and the anime came out after the live action. There's also a Thai live action. Again, super popular. The only reason I started watching this though was because Akaso san is starring in it and in my opinion, he can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. He's such a good actor, not to mention he's beautiful, but everything he's in, I feel like he kills it. And he's always playing different roles. I've seen him in completely different roles that have nothing to do with the last role. And I just, honestly, I love that for him. It's so great. This is my first time seeing Machi san though in a role. I feel like he's great. I feel like he's really great. I feel like the chemistry between them was spot on. Like I was really here for that love story. I really was. One of the things I personally loved about the show was I feel like it gave us a glimpse of what it might be like to be gay in Japan. I mean, there were all these moments where it was like, ooh, but like two guys, they can't kiss, or you know, two guys are not supposed to fall in love, or oh my gosh, people are watching us. And it was a lot of like hush hush, keeping it on the DL. And I feel like that suggested that being gay in Japan is not, not taboo. And I mean, of course this is just a glimpse right i know that japanese culture is very complex and there's a lot of layers to it it's it's not one of those cultures where what you see is what you get so by watching a show obviously you're not going to understand japanese culture like fully but at this point i've seen like 20 to 30 japanese shows so i feel like i've started to create this picture in my mind of what japanese society is like or how it might be and obviously it's not reality it's just what i can gather from watching shows and i feel like it's similar to when foreigners or like non-americans say stuff like oh but i saw that in a hollywood movie or i saw that on american tv aren't all americans like this and it's funny because I'm doing that to Japanese culture, but when it's done to me, I'm like, oh, of course not. Of course, all Americans are not like that. Of course, this is not how like America is. That's just a TV show, right? So I need to keep in mind that like, no matter how many Japanese shows I watch, it's definitely not going to be 100% how it is in Japanese culture. Anyway, all of that being said, I feel like the dynamic of being gay in Japan was definitely touched on in this series and I wonder, Japanese, you know, gay men, do they feel this way? Like, did, did this resonate with them? Do they feel the pressure of maintaining the status quo? Especially in the workplace because I noticed that Adachi-san, he told his college friend Suke, Suke-san, that he was dating um, his coworker but he, they were both super careful at work. Like they did not want to reveal their relationship at work. Whereas Minato-san, the guy who was part of the younger generation, he was openly gay. Or I'm not sure if he was openly gay, but he was definitely openly gay to his friends, right? So that got me thinking, well, maybe there's like a tide shift in Japanese culture. Maybe things are changing, right? Yeah, and speaking of Minato-san, uh, super happy to see a side story in a Japanese drama. I feel like Chinese dramas take the crown when it comes to a complete side story and I love to see like a fully developed mini story within a story in Japanese dramas. Like I think that everyone in 
the story like everyone in the series deserves their own happy ending and i love to see it independently of the main characters because i also feel like it brings the entire series to life when you see different sides of things and when you see different relationships developing and just different people and their situations I also really appreciated the female character, uh, Fujisaki-san. I feel like bringing that mix into like a boy love drama, bringing in a female character really like balances things out. I, for me, it would be boring to see something that only has men in it or only has women in it. Like I like to see a mix of different things, right? Like overall though, this romance was super lighthearted. I was smiling at the TV all the time, looking like a crazy person. It really gave me like that warm, fuzzy feeling that you get when you watch, you know, like a happily ever after. And obviously their relationship wasn't perfect but it, it was beautiful it was like so nice i would definitely highly recommend watching this if you haven't honestly watch anything that has a acaso is this acaso acaso yeah anything that has a caso sound in it definitely watch i actually watched pending train on netflix right before watching this and then I, I was looking for stuff to watch that had him in it because i love him so much and i think i'm gonna review that one next because i really really enjoyed it i just binge watched this one so i decided to do this one first but yeah that's that's it definitely go watch it and i'll see you guys in the next one